Hey guys, today I have a vintage inspired get ready with me video and I'll be talking you through the inspiration for every part of the look, including my hair, makeup and outfit. So let's get started. First, I'm going to talk about this jewelry that I'm wearing. It's all by the brand Ana Luisa. They sent me some of their pieces and I've already been wearing them every day since I got them. I can't wait to show you guys. So first I have the key piece of this vintage inspired look, which is the Lena pearl necklace with this chunky gold clasp. The pearls aren't the kind from the ocean, but actually Swarovski crystal pearls. It has such a fancy vintage rich girl vibe. It's amazing. This one is the Valentina heart necklace and it is so me. I'm sure you guys know how much I love heart motifs, plus all the delicate ridges catch the light in such a beautiful way. It makes it look super designer and expensive. It reminds me of something by Gucci. These are the Mila stud earrings and they give me Alice in Wonderland playing card vibes, plus the gold and red go perfectly with today's look. And lastly, here is the Nina reversible heart necklace, which you could wear to match your earrings or if you're feeling kind of moody or emo, you can flip it over to the black heart side. It's so cute. Ana Luisa are from New York City and they make what they call everyday luxury jewelry. So while most of their jewelry is precious metals like 14 karat gold, they keep their pieces really affordable and you can read more about that on their website as well. So if you are interested in picking up some pieces for yourself or as a gift, be sure to use my discount code SOPHIE as it's spelled right here on the screen to get $10 off your order. And I will also put a link at the top of the description box below. And of course, shout out to Ana Luisa for sponsoring. With my skincare already applied, I'm jumping right into makeup. This is just my usual foundation routine with my Tarte foundation and concealer, but in case I forget to mention any products, they will all be listed in the description box below. Over on my Instagram stories, I told you guys how I wanted to try get ready with me videos with some kind of theme or inspiration, and I asked you what kinds you would be interested in seeing. Most of the responses were vintage, particularly the 1950s and old Hollywood, although I got a lot of other decades too. So I came up with a look that is mostly inspired by the 1940s and 50s. However, it also looks like it could fit into the 80s, which I will explain when we get further into the video. Oh yeah, I'm just showing you a little hack here for how I use up the excess product that gathers on the edge of my concealer tube. My foundation goes over my whole face, then I focus concealer under my eyes and around the sides of my mouth where I have the most scarring or marks from acne. At this point, I had to move my studio light so you can see it in the reflection, unfortunately. I tried so many different ways of framing this shot, but no matter what, you could always see it in the mirror. Don't forget to blend down the neck, of course, especially if you're pale like me and your face is a different color to your neck. Something special I wanted to try for this look was use vintage looking makeup products from my collection to fit in with the theme of the video. So any products that suit the aesthetic will get their own fancy shot like this. I'm using my Besame Agent Carter face powder to set my entire face and neck. I don't usually use powder puffs, but for the theme of the video, I felt that it was definitely fitting as powder was almost always applied with a puff in the 1940s and 50s, which I learned by watching actual makeup tutorials from those decades. My favorite YouTube channel for that is Glamour Days. However, there is one particular powder brush design that is unique to the 1940s and maybe the 50s too. And I have a replica design also by Besame, but I forgot to use it in the video. So I thought I would just show you guys here at least, and maybe I'll use it in a future one. The makeup artist Max Factor used a brush like this to finish off actresses makeup in Hollywood. And as you can see, I did use a small brush just to get the powder around my eyes. Now that my base makeup is done, I'll let that set onto my face and move on to styling my hair. I watched a few tutorials for 1950s Hollywood style curls, but for very long hair like mine. And even with my limited hairstyling skills, I'm going to be attempting that today. <laughs> I'm parting my hair with quite an extreme side part, then sectioning my hair, starting from the back first. Using my curling wand, I'm taking fairly small sections of hair and curling them towards my face. And this is very important, but more simply put, you just start by placing the hair over the top of the barrel before wrapping it around and going as close to the roots of your hair as possible. Just be careful not to burn yourself. 
After holding that for 10 to 15 seconds, I very gently remove the curl off the barrel while keeping it curled up because now I'm going to pin it against my head just like pin curls. Pin curls were a popular vintage hairstyling technique from the 1930s through to the 50s, often done while the hair is still wet and left to dry, which would probably yield even more intense curls. Again, I'm just repeating this, making sure I curl in the same direction every time as this will create uniform waves. Now, I will say in advance that my hair length was definitely not fashionable during these decades, at least in Western culture and old Hollywood. That's why it's so hard to find photos of really long vintage hairstyles. My long hair also makes it far more challenging to get the curls to hold. The front sections of my hair are probably the most important as this is what you'll be seeing the most. Plus we want to get that really nice pronounced front wave. So I'm sectioning and curling these pieces in very small horizontal layers with the section closest to where my hair parts being the last piece that I will curl. And after all that, my hair looks super vintage, including a beautiful vintage inspired burn on my neck, which really spices up the look. But no, I actually did burn my neck on the curling iron. And guys, please use caution. Anyway, moving right along, let's finish the makeup. The classic winged eyeliner and red lip is a truly iconic vintage makeup style for several decades. However, I don't like how a winged eyeliner looks on me. I find it kind of absorbs my eyelashes so it looks like I barely have any. So I'd need to rely on thick falsies to get a good result. Plus, I'm just not very skilled at winged eyeliner, so I'm doing my own version, which is more beginner friendly and so much more forgiving, a soft eyeshadow wing. I'm starting by creating a matte eye look in a neutral toned gradient, starting from the outer corner and fading into the center, keeping the inner corners light. So this might be more of a modern style of eyeshadow and that's the thing with this entire look. It's just vintage inspired. I want it to be something that is still wearable in today's fashion. And you know, if anyone calls you out saying it's historically inaccurate, you just tell them it's inspired so that basically excuses you from any mistakes <laughs> but all jokes aside i'm hoping to create a nice balance of true vintage and modern trends within this look taking a fine pointed eye brush i'm tracing out where the wing will be with taupe eyeshadow i start by adding firm pressure then gently flick it out so it's like a gradient as well I'm using that same eyeshadow and brush and gently running it along my lash line as well, kind of like the eyeliner. If you mess up, you can gently wipe off the eyeshadow or just blend it out and try again. I'll continue to go over this with a dark brown eyeshadow until I'm happy with the result. I'm also taking a medium brown shade and running a little bit of that on my lower lash line, fading it out into the inner corner. It will look a little fuzzy and messy to start, but at the end, I'll go in and clean it up. You can use a Q-tip or as I'm using here, just a small flat brush that is quite stiff so you can get a nice clean sharp edge with foundation powder. Lastly, I'm just ensuring all the eyeshadow is nicely blended out. Honestly, at this stage, I don't even know why I try to apply mascara on camera, but here's my attempt anyway. I'm using my handy dandy little comb to brush out any clumps. Now, eyebrows were an interesting part of this look because I could have gone full vintage and done a thin, super high arched brow, but to be frank, I would have had to glue them down or shave them to truly achieve this. Instead, I decided to follow my natural shape, which is quite straight, although Audrey Hepburn has straight brows too, so I guess it's still vintage. <laughs> and we have another kind of vintage looking makeup product. This is my Legendary Brows Brow Gel by Charlotte Tilbury. This product is so effective that recently I've been able to fill in my entire brows with just this product alone. But for this look, I'm just using it to define the hairs further while also setting them in place. For blush, or as they used to say, rouge, I'm taking my Too Faced Love Flush, which just looks so cute and vintage. I think the packaging would fit well into the 1970s. I'm just applying this on the apples of my cheeks and sweeping it up to the temples. I also noticed that some women seem to wear it below the cheekbones. So if you wanted a more mature looking 1940s or 50s style, you could definitely try this. 
But one thing that I do love that I am ditching for this look is nose blush, as I don't feel that's very 40s or 50s. And I'm sure they did add a little to the nose and chin, but you guys know that I like quite visible, borderline sunburnt looking nose blush, and I just don't think that would be fitting. And for similar reasoning, I'm also ditching highlight. Fairly obvious highlighter like I normally wear just wasn't really a thing back then. Almost forgot to mention, I will pop on some false accent lashes, which just go on the outer half of the eyes. For my lip color, of course, I had to use my Besame Debutante Sheer lip color. Mine is in this slightly burnt red, but on the lips you'll see it is quite bright, so I did blot a little of that off just so it wouldn't overpower the rest of my makeup look. I wasn't sure if I would need lip liner with this lipstick, but I feel like you really should always apply it with red lipstick, so I did end up going in just to clean up the edges to make them nice and neat. And last step for makeup is contouring my neck, because you guys know how my jawline can get totally lost under studio lights. Now that my hair has fully cooled down, it's time to take out the curls, which was quite a time consuming process. There were a lot of pins in my hair. And then I just gently brushed it out. Using my hair straightener, I very carefully ran it over any obvious bumps left from the pins, ensuring not to ruin the curl at the same time. And it looks like we are done with the hair and makeup. I'm really happy with how this turned out, although next time I would use hairspray as these curls did not hold at this volume for very long at all. But don't you guys think that this hair looks kind of 80s as well? I think it's because my hair is just too long to create an authentic 1950s hairstyle. Now let's talk about the outfit. I started with this pair of high-waisted tailored shorts, which were inspired by the women's shorts I saw in this 1958 Sears catalog and various other magazines and catalog images from the decade. With this as the base of the look, I chose a suitable top, which I wanted to be some kind of knit or sweater. Knit sweaters first gained popularity in the 1920s and were mainstream by the 30s. If you think about it, they've never really gone out of style. I went for this 1940s inspired silhouette with pronounced shoulders and a high neckline, which is also inspired by a Sears catalog, this time from 1944. My second sweater option is a cardigan with more of a classic fit, a crew neckline and a dainty heart pattern. This matched so well with my heart earrings and necklace, plus the heart motifs reminded me of sweater designs from the 1940s, which might have been inspired by Ginger Rogers in the 1938 musical Carefree. My sister actually had a dress like this many years ago that I used to borrow. I wish I still had it. I noticed that in a lot of photographs of women wearing pants and shorts in the 1940s and 50s, they were wearing them with loafers, often with white socks. Just like in this 1952 catalog, again, Sears coming through with the inspiration. For accessories, I chose to go with a classic black belt with gold hardware to match my jewelry, as a snatched waist was Definitely a trend for women's fashion during those decades. I even managed to thrift a perfect bag for this look in patent black to coordinate with the shoes in this classic 1950s top handle shape. Another little detail is of course my nails, which I filed into an almond shape and painted in a classic bright red, a popular style from the 40s and 50s. You can use my Kester Black discount code for this color as well. So here we have our two completed outfit options here with the red knit sweater and also the black cardigan. Let me know which is your favorite and why in the comments below. I really do think the red sweater outfit could fit into the 1980s. It's just something about the hair and the shoulders and all of that. Let me know what you guys think. Everything I'm wearing will be linked in the description box below and don't forget to use my Ana Luisa discount code if you wanna pick up any of those jewelry pieces. By the way, if you have any theme ideas for these kinds of get ready with me videos, you can comment those below as well. Thank you for watching. I love you guys so much and I will see you all in my next one.